It's Spurgeon. <laughs> I uh, was humbled, <laughs> uh, touched, just um, moved greatly by sharing something from my utmost that was pretty powerful for me, and I know that God was blessed, and the way I know is because he, you present your daily life to God every day, you sometimes ignore him and go on your way, you sometimes do your own thing and say it's God. Sometimes you go on in faith, pretending it's God and pretending it's His will. And sometimes you seek His face and sometimes you do His will. Only God knows and only you might know. But there are times when God takes what you offer Him, like a devotional or like this work in the ministry of sharing emotionals and he just anoints it and when he does there is no credit taken for what he did there is no glory but that which goes back to him there is no possessiveness because the full knowledge of recognizing that it is him just blesses your soul. Now that doesn't mean that everything you do is going to be anointed. It doesn't mean that your anointing will continue on. But on those times when you do present to God that which your life yearns to lift up to Him and present as a living sacrifice for Him to use, when He anoints it, others will be blessed. But so will you. Ephraim, Ephraim, is a cake not turned. Hosea. A cake not turned is an uncooked one on one side. <laughs> and so Ephraim was, in many respects, untouched by divine grace. Though there was some partial obedience, there was some very much rebellion left. My soul, I charge thee, see whether this be for you in thy case. Art thou thorough in the things of God? Are you completely given over to him? Has grace gone through the very center of your being so as to be felt in its divine operations in all your powers and abilities and your actions and your words and your very thoughts? To be sanctified in your spirit, your soul, and your body should be the goal of your life. It should be your aim and prayer. Although sanctification may not be perfect in you in anywhere near the degree that God would have it to be, Yet, it must be universal in its action. It must be what you seek after. There must not be the appearance of holiness in one place and then reigning sin in another, else you will be like a cake, not turned. And boy, does that apply to my life. <laughs> a cake not turned is soon burnt on the side nearest the fire. And although no man can have too much religion, there are some who seem burnt black with bigoted zeal for that part of truth which they have received or are charred to a cinder with a vain, glorious, pharisaical ostentation of those religious performances which suit their humor. In other words, there are some things that you feast on and you forsake the rest. The assumed appearance of superior sanctity frequently accompanies a total absence of all vital godliness. The saint in public is a devil in private. He deals in flour by day and in soot by night. The cake which is burned on one side is dough on the other. 
If it so be well with me, Lord, then turn me now. Turn my unsanctified nature to the fire of thy love, and let it feel sanctified nature of the fire of thy love. Let it feel the sacred glow, and let my burnt side cool a little while I learn my own weakness and want of heat when I am removed from your heavenly flame. Let me not be found a double-minded man, but one entirely under the powerful influence of reigning grace. For well I know if I am left with a cake unturned, and am not on both sides the subject of thy grace, I must be consumed forever amid everlasting burnings. And so too am I. For is there not parts of my life that I would rather do and be absorbed in and be Oh, so wonderfully blessed. And then the test comes and I find myself eh, not so good. Or maybe I am so good. Or maybe it's you. <laughs> but for me, I see that there's always portions and portions of my life that come up and God brings them out. And I look at them and go, Ugh, where'd that come from? Yuck. And it must be turned over to grace because... It's not that I can solve the issues of my life that I have forsaken in loving, not allowing God in to change and renew, but that rather I need to give them to him to forgive in grace that he would begin to turn me from those things that completely in all of me, I might be his. Is it true in you? Are you hiding something in the closets of your mind? Have you stashed away your secret little sins and little gods somewhere? Do you really like to get into the fantasy football pool? <laughs> do you spend a lot more time with your video games than you do with God games? <laughs> do you not spend any time with your wife? Have you divorced? Have you forsaken your sexual sins and just said, I can't conquer them, so I give in to them. Is there something in your life that has dominance that, oh, when you're in the sanctuary, you feel holy, but when you come home, you feel pagan. It's simple. Just like Spurgeon said, one thing you need to do, ask God <laughs> to turn you. Just ask him to take that little portion of your life and just stick it near the flame. Ask him to turn you. Ask him to take that part, and you know what it is. And don't just let him. Tell him to do whatever he must do in order to conquer that for you. And you know what? The grace that brought you salvation the, is the same grace that will bring you sanctification. Because in God, it is accomplished. But what you need to do is just turn it to him. And whatever kind of cake you are, upside down, German chocolate, carrot cake, <laughs> flatbread just turn it let all sides of you and all parts of you be made known unto God and God will take that and he will make it into a feasting and a joy for others to partake of your life as you become sanctified by him that way when they see you they'll taste your cake and see that the Lord is good